Church in Festus, Missouri, and head of prophetic research ministry with another Watchman video broadcast. You heard the news. Two things going on this week that we're going to deal with, um, and, and they're linked. They're tied together. Uh, the first news we heard was out of Norway. The second thing that we heard this week of some significance, something that really caught my attention was the death of a rock and roll star. And then you say, now, come on, Pastor Mike, this happens all the time. Um, not this way. Not the way that she died or, let's say, the age at which she died. We're going to talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, let's read the article. Amy Winehouse funeral held in London. Friends and family gathered in London on Tuesday morning to pay tribute to Amy Winehouse at a private funeral at the Edgewarebury Cemetery. Winehouse, who died at age 27, of yet undetermined causes. Maybe we can just take a guess at, at, at why and how she died. Uh, was found unresponsive in her Camden apartment on Saturday by a bodyguard. According to the Associated Press, friends such as Kelly Osborne and Back to Black producer Mark Ronson were in attendance at the funeral, which was expected to be followed by cremation and a family gathering at a local synagogue. Hmm. Osborne, one of Winehouse's close friends, wore her hair in a tall beehive as an homage to her pal's signature look. Interesting, a beehive. Um, that's where bees live, by the way, and they're ruled over by a queen, and bees have a sting. And the Bible refers to the sting of death. There was another rock and roll star by the name of Sting. There was also another one by the name of Scorpion, a, a rock group. But anyway, Winehouse's autopsy results were inconclusive, and police said results of toxicology tests will take two to four weeks. An inquest has been opened into her death and was adjourned until October 26. Sky News reported that Winehouse's ex-husband, Blake Fielder Civil, was not in attendance at the funeral after officials refused a compassionate leave from jail where he is serving a 32-month prison sentence after his conviction on burglary and firearms offenses. Now, that's something weird about that. Um, if, you're the, if you're the boyfriend of a super rich rock star, why do you need to break in somebody's house and steal something? I don't get everything that goes on in the weird world of rock and roll. But you've heard this idea that certain rock and roll artists, in order to get big, in order to get big real fast, they, uh, they make a league with the devil. You've probably heard that. There was a TV show back in the 70s uh, called A Year at the Top. I think it only lasted like a, a year or one television season. Uh, one of the reasons why you don't see it on anymore. But I remember this show, and it was about a young man who made a, a contract, an agreement with the devil in order so that he could be this great big rock and roll star. And you say, oh, come on, Pastor Mike. Nobody, nobody does that. Nobody has to make a league with the devil, do they? People do it all the time. In Isaiah chapter 28, I was reading this the other day, and the Lord brought it to my memory. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 14. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, and ye scornful men, that rule this people which is in Jerusalem, because ye have said, listen, listen to what God knows that people have done. Ye have said, we have made a covenant with death. And with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through it, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge. And under falsehood have we hid ourselves. They made... They made a covenant with death. Now, I want you to think Bible terminology here. We have two parts of our Bible. We have the Old Covenant, and we have the New Covenant, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The New Testament is on this side of my Bible, and the Old Testament is on this side of my Bible. Now, we're going to talk... Uh, during this conversation today, we're going to talk about two covenants. We're going to talk about one that's on the right hand. We're going to talk about one that's on the left hand. And the hand here is very, very important, especially when it comes to the death of Amy Winehouse, Kurt Cobain, Janis Joplin, a few others. We're going to see the significance of the hand. Oh, by the way, when you make a covenant with death, 
and with hell are you at agreement when, when that happens at some point they'll come for payment Revelation chapter 6 the Bible says uh, when he opened the fourth seal verse 7 I heard the voice of the fourth beast say come and see and I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. You see, when you make an agreement with hell and death, they're going to require payment one of these days. Mark it down. Um, you followed this broadcast. You followed our ministry, hopefully enough to understand and realize that I believe in conspiracies. I don't believe in, in human-led conspiracies, although there might be a few here and there that actually end up working out. I believe more in spiritual conspiracy. See, that word spirit is right in the word conspiracy. Actually, the word conspiracy means like with whispering or with, with breathing or the idea that when you have a conspiracy you get real close and you whisper with somebody. By the way, whispering is the kind of voice that you'll hear when you listen to familiar spirits. They always whisper. Uh, that's what the Bible says. Uh, but anyway, you have the word spirit in the word conspiracy and I believe that spirits have conspiracies. I believe that spirits are working right now. Paul talked about principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. That's who we're wrestling against. That's, that's the ones that are really sort of in control of a lot of things that going on and, and go on, including making agreements with rock stars and then making them pay for that agreement. Um, it all has to do with covenants and the two types of covenants in the Bible. One of those covenants you see, one of those blessings that you see, uh, is in Genesis chapter 27. Now, I, I picked that particular chapter in the Bible uh, for a very important reason because I think, number one, it has a lot to do with what we're seeing here. But number two, it has to do with a a symbolic significance, a significance that we'll see in, in just a little bit. But you know in Genesis chapter 27, you have the idea where you have the two sons of, of Isaac. You have, you have Esau, who was the firstborn son, and you have Jacob, who was the secondborn son. Now, according to all the, all the uh, family traditions and according to everything like that, it was the firstborn son who should receive the vast majority of his father's inheritance. He should get most of the goats, most of the cattle, most of the sheep, most of the land, most of the servants, and most of the money. That's what he should get. The secondborn son just kind of, well, he doesn't get a whole lot. He gets a little bit, but he doesn't get a whole lot. Esau was the firstborn. But the Bible says that Esau despised his birthright. He decided to cater to the flesh rather than to have something that was going to be eternal because if he had received the birthright, he would have passed it down to his children. But that's not the way it happened. So he despised his birthright. And then in Genesis chapter 27, we have that famous story where Jacob, rather than Esau, receives the blessing from his father, the inheritance. Esau is just basically left with practically nothing. As long as, as, long as Jacob is alive, Esau really gets nothing. He doesn't get his father's land. He definitely is not inheritor of the promise that God made to Abraham and then passed that down uh, to Isaac. And we see in the Bible that these covenants, these, these promises, these agreements, these blessings that we see in the Bible, there's always two of them. And, and one of them is a blessing and a covenant of life. Now, I want you to think uh, as, we're, as we're going through this, and I, it's, it's all going to make sense hopefully here in a little bit. Uh, one of these is a blessing of life or a covenant of life, an agreement that brings life or eternal life. That would be the new covenant, the New Testament of the Bible. The one that, that brings bondage would be represented by the Old Testament. And I want you to kind of get it in your mind exactly how the Bible's laid out um, 
one of them is on this side and, and one of them is on this side. And, and again, it's all going to make sense here in, in just a little bit. You remember the, the promise that God, that God made to Abraham. And he was going to give that promise to his son. Well, Abraham went in against the wishes of God and against the word of God. Abraham went in to his wife's servant, Hagar. And he fathered a son by the name of Ishmael. But we know that Ishmael was not to be the recipient of that particular promise. We see in Galatians chapter 4 verse 22. The Bible says for it is written that Abraham had two sons. Sort of like Isaac had two sons. And you see a lot of similarity here. That Abraham had two sons. The one by a bondmaid and the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. Remember, remember Esau cared more about his flesh. He came in from the fields and he said, I need something to eat. And of course, Jacob said, you know, sell me your birthright and I'll give you something to eat. And Esau would, said, what good does my birthright do if I'm dead? So Esau catered to his flesh. And here that's what Ishmael and Hagar represent. Uh, verse 23 again, but he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. Galatians chapter 4 verse 24 says, which things are an allegory. Now let me stop right here. The word allegory in the Bible is one of those words we find in the New Testament like allegory or in sample or example or shadow. These are all words that the Bible is using to describe what we have explained in this ministry called Bible typology. Bible typology is the study of these Old Testament and even New Testament shadows or allegories or pictures of the first and second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll see in these stories, you'll see a man who might represent Jesus or he might represent the beast. You'll see a woman who will represent either the, the glorious church without spot or wrinkle or she'll represent Mystery Babylon the Great. And so we study typology and, the, and Paul is telling you that these stories such as Jacob and Esau, these stories such as Isaac and Ishmael are Bible typology. They're explaining in picture form the doctrines of the scripture. And so the Bible says which things are an allegory for these are the two covenants. The one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and entereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. Stop right here. What he's saying by this is, is that all of those who decide, apparently like Amy Winehouse, because they met at a synagogue. A synagogue is where... That's where Jews meet. And so they met at a synagogue. And, and those who follow the Jewish faith, and you have to love the Jewish people because God still makes an agreement with them. And he's going to forgive a remnant of their sins. A remnant out of Israel, God is going to forgive their sins in the last days. But every, the Bible that they read is not the same Bible that I have here in front of me. Oh, it's half of it. They have the, the Old Covenant. The Old Testament. And they meet in their synagogues and they roll out that Torah scroll and they read it all in Hebrew. And they tell everybody, keep the commandments, obey the law, do this, do that, and God will bless you. The problem is no one's ever done that. No one's ever obeyed the law. No one's ever kept the covenant that God made with them in the Old Testament. And they are in bondage. They are in absolute bondage bondage. That's, that's the old covenant and it's, it's over here. But then he says in verse 26, but Jerusalem which is above is free, which is the mother of us all. Those who were born not of, not of Sarah, 